Paul Merkwitz. <clears throat> well, thank you. Um, as everybody else, thank you for everyone that puts on this event. It's been better and better every year, and, and uh, always excited to. This is really for us, even though a lot of us have been working. This is this kind of kicks it off and, and really makes it real in terms of um, you know the things that we need to get done. Um, I do want to thank our administration. Uh, for their patience and, and what we're trying to get done in our plan. I um, want to thank Nicholas Patron, he's our new uh, Sports Information Director. Um, with a lot of fight from me, um, we're entering the right day and age and we're on Twitter now here all of a sudden and some other things and uh, all that stuff, so I appreciate his patience and working with me. Um, I need to thank really two staffs and I'll try to explain as best as I can. You know, when I got to MAC three and a half years ago, a lot of coaches, when they go in and they take over a different program, they bring guys that they know and they feel comfortable with, and uh, they basically get rid of that staff and, and move on. The guys that were here when I got here were fantastic coaches, had a great handle on what we were doing, um, and we didn't make a change. And we kept every one of those guys, and I made the huge mistake about six months ago in a conversation. I said, I haven't had to replace a, a coach in two and a half years. And of course, I knocked on wood, and I don't think I hit the right wood, uh, because right after that, things started changing. And so, E.J. Peterson, who was our defensive coordinator, um, Took another job in coaching at uh, Grandview University. He left right before the spring. Um, Travis Kinchlau, who was our offensive line coach, recruiting coordinator. Um, him and his wife and his family moved back home. Um, he's going to coach football down, high school football down in Texas. Um, and then Justin Van Houten, who was taking over as a defensive coordinator, is also moving back home, which is I.O. for him, uh, to get into the private sector and, and uh, go from there. But I have to thank those guys first because when I look at our roster to where it was and where it is now, um, you know, when I first stood my first year, this is the fourth time we've done this, so whatever, three years ago, we had 55 guys on the roster. You know, we anticipate having 100 players, um, and a lot of it has to do with the work that they put in in recruiting as well as retention. Um, we've been very fortunate from that standpoint. So. Our coaches are not here because obviously they're very busy. We've been at it for about two weeks now. Um, coaching coaches, it, I, I did something I've never done before um, in 30 years of coaching. We had a coaching staff meeting and each guy stood up and introduced himself and said where he was at and what his family is because our guys didn't know each other. Um, I'm really excited with this group of guys. You know, I think one of the things that it's not a knock on the guys that were here by any stretch, because again, we're not here today without them, but to get a new sense of energy and perspective, I think is going to help us move to the next level that we want to get to. Because I do believe um, we have enough talent to compete at a higher level on Saturdays, and I think those guys are going to help us in what we're doing. Okay. Russell McCoy, who's last, uh, comes last from us uh, from Coffeyville Community College, where he was the defensive coordinator there. Very excited about uh, what we're going to be doing defensively. Um, it will be a little bit different. Um, so our guys on the defensive side of the ball are going to have a quick learning curve in terms of what they need to get done. Um, Victor Red, who spent the last three seasons, four seasons at Southwestern with Coach Griffin. We're really excited to have him. Uh, Jimmy Wilson will return. He's a part-time guy for us. Um, he works with the outside linebackers. And then Chris Ellison, who's an alum, um, he's going he's to join the staff on the defensive side of the ball. Um, I think it's imperative that your defensive players have to be excited about making plays, not worried about making mistakes. There's not one of us up here that doesn't recruit 
to get faster and stronger and better. But I think if, as a coach, you ask a guy to process a bunch of information before he even moves his feet, his athletic ability goes way down. So we, we want guys flying around. I, and I tell our guys that, and our, I've told our coaches that. I, I mean, I don't want to see somebody scooting up the sidelines for a 60-yard touchdown, but if we're turning people over three, four times a game and, and we're getting off the field in three downs 50% of the time, I'll live with that. And so I want our guys excited about making plays and not too worried about <coughs> making mistakes. We do return eight starters on the defensive side of the ball. So I think that's going to lend us some really good things. But we also, at the same time, we don't have a depth chart on the defensive side of the ball because nobody knows anybody. Okay, So everybody's going to come in and compete, and our guys know that. I think they're excited about it, and uh, you know, and we'll go from there. Um, on the offensive side of the ball, James Grindy, who was uh, at Cahoma Community College um, in Mississippi in the last year, two years, he's taken over as our offensive line coach. Um, Tommy Fazell, who's at Eastern Kentucky, um, he's going to be our wide receiver coach. And then Jalen Barnes, who is an all-conference offensive lineman, uh, is going to coach our running backs. And so we're also excited there as well. Um, we return 10 starters on offense. Um, and I think typically it goes, um, it goes where the quarterback goes for us on offense. And I don't know, I haven't been able to look at everybody's sheet, but I don't know that anybody's got a court, has two quarterbacks that threw for over 1,000 yards last season. So we're excited uh, for that competition to begin to take place. Um, with Ed Crouch back as a junior, and Jake Tiernan back, as a junior, um, we're very excited there. I think we've got very explosive running backs. Um, Armand McCray from here in Wichita. Um, Corey Davis, uh, who played a good amount for us. And then we've also added some young players that I think can really do some things. Um, at wide receiver, first team all conference, Jackson Goodmiller returns. Um, as well as Brant Walters, who I believe was a second team uh, selection. Um, and then we've got some really nice talent on the outside that can really stretch the field. So we're going to attempt to really continue to try and get up and down um, as much as we can. Um, defensively, like I said, with the, with the returning starters there, um, Chandler Tisby in the middle is, uh, has been a solid guy for us. Um, Actually, I'm sorry. I always do this and I get in trouble when I get back because guys will go, Coach, you didn't talk about me. Um, <laughs> in the offensive line, uh, we return essentially everyone. Um, Logan Anderson, I don't, know there's, I don't know there's a program in the country that has a guy that has started 31 straight games. <clears throat> he started since day one when he came in as a freshman. Um, does an excellent job. Darius Gugis returns, David Deremy, uh, Orlando Guzman, uh, Jonas Benegas, and then we also get Amose Hayakula back. He was out last year at Redshirt, and, and he's back, so he'll take over at right tackle for Jalen Barnes, who graduated. Um, again, in defensive line, I think we're extremely solid, but Chandler's that guy that really settles the middle for us, Joey Hale. We did get a fifth year uh, from Isaiah Hill, who got hurt in his junior year. So really excited to have him back. Um, Don DeLuca at linebacker, Patrick Caleb at linebacker, Tanner Williams at linebacker. Um, so we're pretty excited there. Cole Calkins in the secondary will return. So you know, moving forward, that's where um, you know that's where I think those are some of the things that. Um, we're looking forward to. If we stay out of the Lightning games, I think it's going to be a great season. We were in three. Um, one of them, which Dion, I'm never doing that again. We played half of a game on a Saturday and half a game on a Sunday, and I don't think either teams played anywhere near their caliber. Um, but because you had some really tired football players, and you know, spent the uh, spent a whole Saturday night in the in the Bethany weight room, which was very nice. <laughs> um, but uh, drove back uh, 
old school style, which was good that we were playing there, because it was all pickups and bands, and, and we looked like, uh, it reminded me of Hoosiers, when everybody was just kind of driving down the road with everything and stuff like that. But uh, So yeah, if we can stay out of those, I think that'll certainly help us, but I think it helped us with our adversity and things like that. So we have 40 ladder winners, like I said, 18 returning starters, um, and for the first time in a long time, 19 seniors. I stood here last year and I think I had five. You know, so we've been able to retain and recruit and be able to do those things. It definitely makes a difference in your locker room, in your community, when you have 19 assistant coaches that are in areas that the assistant coaches would be in. And I think that helps with leadership. So, any questions? Yes. Kicker and punter on special teams. We Dallas will return. We return RJ Garza punter. Um, Jake Re or uh, Jack Reed will not return for us. Okay, we have two freshman kickers that also punt. Uh, we haven't had two punters or, or two kickers since I've been there. So we're kind of excited to get a little competition on that and get that going. Yes. Um, what's going to come down to um, with your quarterback situation? Are you going to find a decision? Well, I mean, we're going to both let them compete and see who runs the offense. And, and, and both the nice thing is both both quarterbacks are, are different in what they what they bring to the table. And so it, it'll it'll have to do with, you know, one who's performing best and who we think we can lead the team. But um, I'm not opposed to playing both in the same day. You know, um, Coach Gardner's won conference championships, putting two guys out there, and it forces you to kind of really look at, as a defensive coordinator, two totally different things. But uh, a lot of them just have to do with performance and leadership, and uh, you know, and kind of go from there. What's been the biggest thing for you in terms of player retention? You mentioned how much better your staff has been at that these last couple of years versus your first two. What's the biggest improvement you think you've made in that area that's I, 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 I think, well, one, because we were so young, a lot of these guys have played. You know, and so a lot of times, and these coaches know that, uh, a lot of times a young man has a real inflated idea of where he should be, and if he's not playing, he quits. You know, and, and so that's, that's one. But I think our approach to how we're doing things is, is another thing, you know. Uh, one of the coaches mentioned last chance you. No, not happening. Um, our job as a coaching staff is to help these young men become more well-rounded than where they were before they came to us. And I think playing football helps that and prepares them for what's coming next. And so we've tried to, with honesty, um, and just the way we treat guys, uh, that's how we build trust. That's how we get guys to get out of their comfort zone. And I think there's a big difference there than, say, 25 years ago. 25 years ago, coaches were coaching, trying to instill fear in a young man so he would do what he's supposed to do. Um, that's not the case, you know. And so I think that that's, uh, that's really, you know, the biggest thing. So I didn't. I don't want you to think I forgot. I do want to thank my wife, Heather. Uh, she's put up with me for 18 plus years. We're our 18th anniversary this, uh, this summer. Um, she pretty much single-handedly raises a 16 and 14 year old girls. So if you want to say a prayer, I say a prayer for her every day because that's a, a challenge in itself. But uh, she does a wonderful job of letting me get done what I need to get done and, and still take care of the family and everything that she does. So I want to thank her. So, okay. Thank you.